Welcome to the Lowell and Hardy Museum. This museum obviously is a tribute to uh, a man who was born here in Ulverston in the home of his grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. Metcalf. Stan didn't live here long in Ulverston, but he did come back whenever he could. He uh, wrote many letters and luckily there are many photographs showing Stan as a young boy here in the town. Hello, I'm Bill Cubin, the curator of the Lowell and Hardy Museum here in Ulverston. And as you can see from the plaque, Stan Jefferson, or St who was to become Stan Laurel, was born here in Ulverston over a hundred years ago. So I'd like to take you down to the house where it all started. Please follow me through the town. The house where Stan was born is only a short walk from the museum. The museum itself is situated in the town centre, just off King Street, in fact, in Upper Brook Street. That's all right, there's the sign. And this is King Street, the centre of the town of Alderston. isn't Stanley himself. Hello Stanley, how are you doing? Come on, let's sit you on the wall. Well this is where it all started. Stan was born here on June the 16th 1890 as you can see with the plaque. The plaque was put on of course in 1974 and uh, Stan didn't live here long perhaps no more than four or five years but there's lots of evidence he came back particularly as a little boy and played around here. His father, Arthur Jefferson, had come down from the northeast to open a small theatre here in Alverson called the Hippodrome, which of course is on the site opposite where we are now in uh, Argyle Street. His mother, Madge, of course, lived here, and there were four children, all born here in the town. There was Gordon, Stan, Beatrice and Teddy. But there's lots of evidence that Stan, in uh, many of his letters, referred to Argyle Street. He used to come here quite often, he used to love to go shopping with his grandma. In fact, there's a lovely photograph of Stan with his grandma at the front of the house here. But I think you'll find that uh, there are people coming from all over the world now to see the little house where it all started over a hundred years ago. And there's little Stan. This is Argyle Street. It's only a short street, and of course it originally was called Foundry Cottages. In fact, where these new houses are now is the original site of the foundry which, which gave the street its name. And of course, directly opposite here is the site of the uh, small theatre that Stan Laurel's father had, Arthur Jefferson. This, of course, is the yard at number 3 Argyle Street, virtually unchanged in uh, over a hundred years. We have the same flags on the, on the bottom and we have the, uh, the old wall, the wash house, and an in interesting story that Stan told about Grandad, who used to lock him in the wash house. It was a dismal place, he said, and he said if you were there for a long time it wasn't very pleasant. But in the end, Stan, in fact, uh, got it all sussed out because he um, decided it would be nice to have his comics, his matches and his candles in there and he kept up to date with his reading. This is the old bank clock 
where Stan's grandfather in fact used to climb up every day to uh, wind up the clock with a rope. And now we're heading towards Gillam's shop where Stan used to come with his grandma for his treacle toffee. In one of his letters he said, I used to love to go shopping on Market Street in Oldson with Grandma Metcalf. He said that was a big event for me. She used to buy me beers, treacle toffee and it sure was good. And this is the little shop that Stan visited with his grandma. Very much unchanged for many hundreds of years. special place for Stan was here at Canal Foot where he spent many happy hours fishing. He'd been taught by his uncle John Shaw and as the canal ran close to his home he didn't have far to go for his hobby. On the, on the other side from here the Cross Morecambe Bay runs Tridley Viaduct which carries the railway to Carnforth from Lancaster. Railway travel was nothing new to the Jeffersons by the 1890s. Steam trains had in fact passed by the near Argyle Street home for nearly 30 years prior to Stan's arrival. One particular train journey shows how Stan's love of mischief reached a peak. When the family were travelling across the viaduct with his cousin Mary, one moment they were gazing over Morecambe Bay, the next Stan had suddenly produced his grandfather's infamous stirrup strap which he used to discipline the children. In great defiance of what the strap symbolised, Stan flung it out of the window into the bay. Unfortunately, Stan's efforts were wasted, as Grandma had more than one stirrup strap, and as a result, young Stanley was banished to the dark, dismal wash house in the backyard as punishment. Whenever Stan made his way to and from the canal, he would see a local landmark whose memory was to stay with him for a very long time. In 1897, when Stan was seven years old, a doctor named Thomas Watkins Wilson died in London. Dr. Wilson and his daughter Mary often spent their holidays in Olverston, so when their father died, Mary decided to have a special monument placed here in remembrance and it was that monument that Stan found so fascinating. It was in the shape of a lighthouse with an anchor carved into its base but its most unusual feature was a working light at the top of the lighthouse which at one point was lit all the time, 24 hours a day. So strong was the memory of this little lighthouse that Stan even mentioned it to a Daily Herald reporter in 1932. Stan was gazing up at his name in lights above a theatre in London's Leicester Square when he said, it looks great but kind of wasteful. But you should see the lighthouse in the graveyard at Ulverston in Lancashire where I was born. They put it up when I was a kid, a tombstone with a light on top. It was the eighth wonder of the world to me. Ever since then, it's been my ambition to have a tombstone like that but the memorial wasn't the only lighthouse that Stan knew from his birthplace. This, of course, is one of Stan Laurel's, or as it was, Arthur Stanley Jefferson's favourite place to play. In many of his letters he talked about Hoad, Easter time, of course, rolling his eggs down the hill. But I think uh, this was the favourite place for the children of the town of Ulverston to play. And there's lots of evidence from, certainly from letters in the uh, past that Stan really enjoyed coming here. This of course uh, is a monument to Sir John Barrow, the Arctic explorer, and it's interesting that it's a lighthouse three miles from the sea. But of course Sir John Barrow wrote the uh, log for the voyage of the Mutiny on the Bounty, which of course led to the film and of course uh, great fame for Fletcher Christian and all his crew. But um, this was certainly a, a very wonderful place for Stan Arthur Stanley Jefferson, as a little boy, he played here very often. From the viaduct we can see, as we pan round further left, in the distance, the snow on the hills of Yorkshire, the Yorkshire Dales. 
It's interesting that Stan's grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. Metcalf, came from the Yorkshire Dales down to Olverston and started, uh, his father started uh, a little business in uh, Olverston as a cobbler. Also, of course, cut further round as we look, we can see the start of the Lakeland Hills. The Lake District, of course, is right on the doorstep and within uh, 10 minutes drive of Olverston, you can be at Coniston Lake. It's a wonderful view today, particularly with the snow on the hills. The Jefferson family returned to Bishop Auckland in early 1895, but Stan remained in Olverston with his grandparents for two years, only seeing his parents on brief visits there until he was six. He also spent most of his school holidays with Grandpa and Grandma Metcalf, occasionally also visiting his aunt and uncle Shaw in Sori. By 1897, AJ was manager of the Theatre Royal in North Shields and moved in with Madge to number 8 Dockery Square. AJ was also busy writing more plays and even found time to travel all over the country managing various different touring companies. At that point, Stan finally broke away from his beloved Olverston to attend boarding school in Bishop Auckland. Not content with a growing reputation as a school comic, young Stanley was now confident enough to ask AJ's permission to start some real theatrics. After some ardent pleading, the attic of the Jefferson home in North Shields was transformed into a tiny theatre, starring none other than the Stanley Jefferson Amateur Dramatic Society. Meanwhile, back at school, Stan's skill at mimicry was causing problems with his education. Stan wrote, I don't think playing Bates and other masters helped my education, any, as I was given a lot of privileges, and a lot of my backwardness in class was overlooked which many times since I regretted. Those were happy days at Bishop Auckland. AJ failed to see the sunny, funny side and took him away from St John's in Bishop Auckland. Stan was 10 years old when he moved to the academy in Danford under strict instructions to do better. A few months after Stan's transfer to Gainford, A.J., Stan's father, took over management of the prestigious Metropole Theatre in Glasgow. So the whole family moved up to the city to make a new start together. After attending two Glasgow schools, Queen's Park and Rutherglen, Stan finished his education at the age of 16. Arthur Jefferson had now become a more philosophical about his son's lack of academic progress. Father began to assume that Stan would naturally take over management of the theatres in due course. But this was way off Stan's own plans. His burning ambition to act, which had grown and developed in the family home, had lately gone unnoticed by AJ, but Stan did have a, other support. Although his mother was bedridden at the time, Madge, his mother, gave Stan great encouragement in their common appreciation for the players of the period. While Madge encouraged Stan to the hilt, Grandma disapproved with equal vehemence. To Grandma Metcalf, the toll of life on the road with its all its uncertainties was something to be rejected. She based her views on the difficulties she had seen her daughter Madge experience, the least of these being painful separations and heartache felt by all the family, including Stan himself. And yet, all her warnings fell on deaf ears. His beloved grandma's earnest words made very little difference to Stan, simply because his desire to act was so strong. While the Metropole went from strength to strength under AJ's direction and management, his wife died after a long illness in 1908. She was buried in Glasgow Cathcart Cemetery. 
She was sorely missed by many of the theatrical profession, colleagues and fans alike. After the blow of Madge's death, AJ took a greater, more dedicated interest in his son's developing career. Stan was now 18 and was already well versed in the skills needed to run a theatre from top to bottom. From distributing handbills in the street, Stan quickly worked up his way until he was performing with the star of a juvenile pantomime troupe who was to become a lifelong friend, We Georgie Wood. After some hard work on Stan's part, AJ stepped in to find the big break his son had been waiting for. Through AJ, Stan had managed to get into the Fred Carno comedy troupe, which was then being headlined by Charlie Chaplin. Although Stan was, became Chaplin's understudy, instant success did not follow, and a testing tour around America showed Stan the hard struggle at first that hand that his grandma had spoken of years earlier. The second Carnot show was better received by the American audiences and this eventually gave Stan the feedback he needed to continue the career we know him for today. Fred Carnot's Circus, Fred Carnot's Army. Everybody in the world has heard of Fred Carnot's comedians. They never fought, but they made people laugh. And Stan, of course, was part of that laughter. I think he was a, a fantastic chap. He left here to go to America and, of course, made his fortune in films. And so I'm sure that uh, everybody in the world uh, remembers the wonderful world of Lowell and Hardy. And remember, it all started here in this little town of Ulverston uh, many, many years ago.